Welcome back to another unsolicited and uneducated football analysis with your friend David Valentin. Again, on the couch where dreams come true. This um, uh, this um, video, I want to dedicate it to something that I, a little bit of a controversy uh, in the internet. When does loyalty to a club ends? And where does the necessity of making a living start? If uh, you have heard the news, Dom Dwyer has signed a two-year deal with Atlanta United. This has some people upset because they see Orlando City as the spiritual home of Dom Dwyer. First of all, let's talk about Dom Dwyer, the person. Dom is an English-born player of Jamaican ancestry uh, who came to the United States as a backup plan. Uh, he had hurt his foot, and uh, some doctors felt that he would never play football again. Uh, he was given a choice that many of you, us, you, me, will take in his position. Hey, come play football, soccer in the United States, worst you can do is you get a degree. So he came to Tyler, Texas, East Texas, uh, to play the beautiful game. I have lived in Texas, uh, more towards central Texas. I lived in a small town called Hillsboro, south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, worked in, in, in Dallas in several different companies. Um, very familiar with Texas. I've been back for business in several locations. I have traveled uh, most of the state. And um, one of the things about it is that going from England to Tyler had to be shocking. Texas has a culture of its own, like any other state. Um, but um, East Texas is just dotted with small towns, like you know, like people there have never lived, have never even left the state. Uh, when I lived in Texas, that was shocking to me to see grown adults in, in their 30s and 40s never been outside of the state. Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. But anyways, so he goes there um, in this humongous culture shock that it had, that probably was. Uh, lights it up on fire. It was a two-year college, so obviously after two years he has to go. Ends up in the University of South Florida in Tampa. And then from there, he does another great job, and he gets drafted into Sporting Kansas City. And that's how his story gets intertwined with Orlando's. He, he's sent uh, on loan to Orlando City. By all accounts, he didn't want to be here. He felt that this was a downgrade, um, and deservedly so. At the time, uh, the MLS is not what it is today. With the, I mean, it's insane the 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 steps that MLS has done since 2015 uh, to become become a, a league. That in infrastructure, in money, um, in gameplay, really has nothing to envy most leagues in the world. And um, quite honestly, the the best is yet to come. Uh, to be honest with you, so he comes to Orlando alone. Uh, he scores a bunch of goals. Um, he wasn't here for the whole season. That's one thing that we have to make clear. I believe. He scored 13 goals in 15 games, if I'm not mistaken. So he was recalled, obviously. We make the playoffs, and on our way to the final, three major things happen that will define Orlando City going forward from that spot. Number one, for reasons that I would love to know, Orlando City fails to win the league meaning the regular season, by a point. Richmond Kickers, who today are in USL League 1, the third division of American football, they managed to win by a point. I don't know what happened. Um, Orlando City 
without a question, won every single year that was in USL. They won in 2011, they won in 2012, they won in 2014. 2013, they missed by a point. I don't know. So that would have guaranteed that the championship game had to be played in Richmond, Virginia. Not good when you're trying to woo um, MLS, right? So devastating news for Orlando. Then your star striker, Chinese long tan, gets red carded. Now you're going into this game without your best player. What do you do? So, Orlando City makes a phone call, calls uh, Sporting Kansas City, which a lot of fans today uh, don't know that Sporting Ca- the Sporting Kansas City organization did so much for Orlando back in those days. I always find a kinship and an affinity and a great respect for them. Orlando City for two years was the affiliate to Sporting Kansas City, and they did they did wonders for us. And um, as an Orlando City fan, sometimes, like I have said before, the history of what makes us who we are gets swept under the rug because MLS and the former ownership like to pretend that our history started in March of 2015, and that's not true. So, we, you know, the then owner... Um, uh, or minority owner at this point, because the, the team, I believe, at that point had been already sold to Flavio, um, makes a phone call saying, hey, could you could you send them to us for just the one game? And Sporting Kansas City said yes. Sporting Kansas City didn't have to. Don do I didn't have to. They just felt, hey, they're in a jam. They're trying to get to MLS. They're trying to win a championship. Why not? Now, this is the last piece of the puzzle. In surprising fashion, Richmond Kickers lost their semifinal game. And now it is second place Orlando who's hosting. This led Orlando to host this incredible game where the, the scoreline ended up being 7-4. to four. Four goals for Dom Dwyer. Dom Dwyer helps Orlando lift the trophy in front of 21,000 people. And he crowns himself champion in USL. And he will go back to Sporting Kansas City to do the same as an MLS champion that year. It is my opinion, my personal opinion, that Dom Dwyer's exploits that night allow us to win that championship. And got eyes and ears at MLS headquarters that Orlando was a, a viable city for an MLS franchise, for an MLS expansion. And it was so much so because that year, uh, MLS granted us the wish, the entry to MLS. So for that reason, I feel that Dom's exploits deserved to be remembered. Now, when Dom returns to Orlando City, he does so under the guise of pandering. Nicky Budalik, or Budalik, however you pronounce this guy's name, who is now in Miami. You have seen how Miami, how terrible Miami is. It doesn't surprise me one bit. He goes and uh, brings Dom under a so under a, such an incredible lopsided contract, uh, we pay him at one point five million dollars per season. Uh, there's there's no trade clause, meaning that we couldn't trade the guy, um, and we bring him with all this fanfare. Oh, the 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 guy that scored when he wants is coming back to Orlando. Uh, honestly, there wouldn't be any other club in Orlando in, in MLS that would have been so generous with them. They bring him down here, and Dom fails to live to the expectations. Why? Number one, because this is MLS, not USL. Number two, it's a different manager. Okay, it was a, it was an Adrian Heath. Number three, 
He was surrounded by different players in a different system. Four, five, he was already a player in decline. Keyword. And things never got any better. And at the end, he got injured, missed the last year of his contract, and he was shown the door. I respect Dom Dwyer for everything that he did for us and everything he attempted to do in MLS. But the reality is, is that in MLS, he was being asked to be a newer version of his younger self who lit a very poorly constructed third division. And they were expecting him to be that guy in first division. Now, Don Dwyer uh, just went through a divorce. I'm not going to touch that because obviously it's personal. He made some decisions in his life, which he obviously had to pay for. And as a married man, as a man on my second marriage, my first marriage lasted five years. My second marriage is 16 years and going strong. Uh, I can tell you that divorce is devastating, is humiliating. And uh, when there's kids involved, even more so. And I just wish that Don one day realizes that his mistakes and that he finds happiness somewhere. Don Dwyer needs to work. He has a family. He's only 31 years old, going on 32. Um, he still has a few years left in his career. So if Atlanta United wants to pay him, why not? Professional players are not... Um, are not fans. They go where they are paid. That Don Dwyer loves Orlando, uh, the community, the city. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I see him living here after his playing games are done. We have seen this with plenty of players who make Orlando their home. Their home after after their playing days are done. Um, his kids live here. His wife still has. Another year left on her contract, I believe one or two years left on her contract, his ex-wife. So his kids are going to be here, so obviously he's going to be around. Um, I think um, we can't erase what he did for the club, so we have to be respectful of that. But at the same time, Dom Dwyer needs to work. And if Atlanta United is the team that wants to roll the dice for him, we have to respect that. I don't understand why people want to attack him personally. Because, again, for a professional football player, you know, this is just a job. They have to make money. All that batch slapping, all that batch kissing is always pandering to the fans. I'm sorry, that's, it's just part of the job. Personally, when I work for an employer and I put on the shirt with their name representing that employer... I do the same. Oh, this is the best company in the world. These are the great guys. And if I move on, well, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So it's, it's the same here. So in retrospect, I think that some of the fans to go and go at him, um, disrespect some of his former teammates who were very happy for him um, and went on social media to congratulate him. Uh, it's just tasteless. Uh, at some point, we have to understand there's a human being inside that jersey that does not live 90 minutes a week. This is a guy that, that ha just like you and me, has issues, has problems, and this is just his job. You know, we wouldn't, we don't mind when is the groundskeeper or the kid manager who goes to another team. What should we care? What where Don Dwyer goes? First of all. As a player, I don't think he's going to be impactful there. Uh, I don't care if he scores or not as long as he is not against my team. And I just wish him the best. Um, I think uh, with the fans, he was always very respectful, very caring. And uh, he's going to do the same in Atlanta for sure. Um, so I think I know a lot of people have animosity towards Atlanta because Atlanta has been everything that Orlando hasn't been. But they are owned by, by billionaires who saved a ton of money by having the team play in an NFL stadium. 
and they 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 found a winning formula, and they had uh, two successful years, and they lifted a few trophies. So they have built a fan base that is arrogant, and that thinks the sky's the limit. We that follow football know that you know that's not every year, and that's not possible every season. So to each their own. You know, and they they, they, they they think that because now Dom Dwyer is playing for Atlanta United that all of a sudden magically he's going to, all his efficiencies are going to go away. But that's it. That's that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, the, the, the story of Dom Dwyer and the reason why we shouldn't even bother. I think we need to respect people on a professional level. And, um, yeah. You know, if uh, if Nani or uh, Mueller or any of those players were to return to the league and go play for another team, uh, it wouldn't bother me at all. That's because it's, it's what it is. You know, uh, you know they are their contractors. They have to go where work uh, where somebody offers them work. And then on, on top of that, uh, it's not like Dom Dwyer is exclusive. Other players that were part of Orlando, the Orlando City organization have gone to play there. Uh, Dom, will, Dom will be the seventh. And also the legendary Ro Valentino, former uh, captain of this club. Um, it has been with our organization for years in, the, um, uh, ma- in a managerial role. Um, also, you have former captain of Orlando City, Jonathan Spector, being part of the uh, recruiting uh, team there. So, again, um, I just don't understand the animosity towards Dom Dwyer. What was Dom Dwyer supposed to do? Stay home, retire, go play USL, because you, the fan, that pay you $30 to go uh, watch the games, don't want him wearing those colors? It's dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So, with that said, Sunday will be our first game. I will be there to document our start of the 2022 season. If you can make it, please show up. Your Lions need you. With that said, vamos Orlando.